kids. Realize I made a mistake. <laughs> well, fuck. This is actually th chapter 37. Blue Ridge Mazda Parallels, and this is part B, the second time I've read from this chapter. It's a little bit longer. Here we go. Dad would wipe the spittle from the sides of his mouth as I sat wide-eyed across from him, watching him br brush his nose with... You read this. This is chapter 37, technically, and it's part B. You get the idea. I've always had pretty good common sense and an ability to appropriately time when to be a people pleaser, which I think was a, survivor, a survival skill acquired via the, this exposure to my family, especially surviving wars tirades. Josh, jo, you're joshing me. Jostling back and forth a bit in time, I now realize this has been a life process. The hilarity of this guy's insecurity is boundless. I would just genuinely offer up practical solutions to what I thought could help Dad with his problems. I.e., Dad, maybe you shouldn't give out so many demos. Maybe having the managers be accountable. Or fire them instead of expecting that they are going to change after years of being incompetent. I mean, how about replacing so-and-so for whatever continuous infraction that they make? If Jim or whoever is doing drugs, why not just fire them? Or implement a drug screening process with regular drug testing? I mean, this was my reasoning at 12 and continued to be so throughout my life. It made sense to me. It wasn't, however, on my radar at this age that there could have been other reasons why these folks remained employed. For instance, was the un undercover reason James had not been fired for countless infractions, and why he was wielding an insurmountable meal or family-like level of job security based on his cuckolding skills. Oh. It's almost Halloween. To me, it's like every day. In regard to Jim Gatewood, my father stated flat out, Jim makes me too much goddamn fucking money. He was hands down the dealership's top selling new car salesman. Gotta love those guys. We would marvel how he would, how he could work for a week and sell 20 cars. 20 motherfucking cars in a week. Every month, his motivation was simple. To get the crack dollars, yeah. Smoking the crack. It was pretty basic. Nothing was radder than giving Captain Caveman some advice and hearing him repeat it verbatim in that upcoming manager meeting. It always made me feel like, what the fuck? You just yelled at me for an hour as if all this fucking adult shit at 12 is my fucking responsibility. And then you proceed to tell your employees the very same ideas I just presented and don't give me any fucking credit. He would pay. He still is paying. And so am I. <laughs> Dad was a very successful and secure businessman with only a sophomore level of high school education. Somehow he slipped through the cracks. Imagine that happening in good old America, ka, 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 ka. Educational system, especially back then. Talk about an age old story. Typically, most don't end up so financially blessed. Hail the educational system. He was always, he has always had a pretty patriarchal, archaic Machiavellianism to his rule. Boy, you rule by control, by cruelty, embarrassment, and violence, boy. The home front, actually, what home front? Anyway, his behavior just didn't become magically sesame, <laughs> sesame street-like. Dad was the way he was, everywhere, and all the time. Like Saturn, or Cronus again. And in fact, I'm not sure what other myth could be referenced here. However, there was probably several other male gods that devoured all their children. 
And whatever the most brutal of that type of archetype story may exist out there, I feel like it would be nicely fitting. That was Cronus. Dipshit. Sorry. I still hate myths! I began to develop this very bad nervous picking habit after years of sitting across from this jackhole, witnessing a re and receiving the brunt of his anger on a regular basis. This guy would yell with such ferocious, ferocious, ver ferociousness that customers downstairs and outside the service department could hear him. There had been several complaints, but considering the business-like environment, no one thought ever to call DCSF. Department of Childhood, Department of Child and School and Family Services, hell, Dr. Baker more than likely had their number on the wall at her office. But that's a whole other angle. There was no escape. At this time, my mother was employed by him and worked right across the hallway. Uh, do you think she intervened? Dad's, dad instilled fear in everyone. This meant she never actually did. As his tirades escalated, he would get to so wound up that he'd reach up across the desk at me. I was, I don't know, kind of like a video. Eerily enough, Dad again sounds tonally and a whole lot like Mel Gibson, but I will say even a bit angrier and physically willing to impose. His will hints the Joe Pesci character amalgamation given earlier. I began to regularly disassociate and look down at my left arm and pick, 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 pick like a tweaker. With this velocity of rage and with being only a small child, it began to pretty... It began to be pretty difficult to maintain eye contact with my father. Huh. Imagine that. I was just too afraid. I could smell his rage. Oh, uh, you're not an animal. You're a human being. Um, there was no way I could just stand up while he was screaming at me for any number of things and just leave the room. God forbid I leave the presence of the king amidst one of his royal tirades. The most fucking absurd thing about all of this is none of those motherfucking adults at any point in time tried to intervene on any level. Oh, and speaking of my mother, who worked just across the hallway, never once did she come into the office during the numerous tirades to tell him, chill the fuck out and do not speak to our son that way. I mean, after all, this is why she allegedly had wanted to quit her job at Crow Brothers and only work three hours a day so she could be a better mom. Hail lip service. Refer to earlier story about Gary if you need to be reminded of a character snapshot of my mother, my birth mother's character. High five. They just all hopped to like good obedient sheep that were a part of my father's mindless flock. It was so fucking lame. This their insanity was was did st st stain my perception of the world. Remember, I am mentally ill. And then some. Plus, I'm ebbing and flowing through different time periods of my life. However, hands down, Dad's rage has always been the same, even still to this day. No wonder I was an angry little spiteful fucker. And still am, but Mr. Christ knows that I have had numerous similarly ridiculous outbursts throughout my own life. The most absurd relationship actually scratched that. One of the many of the most absurd relationships I have ever had with a Blue Ridge Mars employee was when there was this weird motherfucking... Pardon me. When the... Uh, well, that, there's been some of that. When there was this weird mothering, nurturing, combat veteran-like sense of bonding shared between the general manager, Dara, and I. She was, and I'm sure is despite not seeing Dara for close to 15 years, now it's been 20 or so, thank fucking God, probably is still a very attractive woman. Nonetheless, at this time, she was in her mid-thirties and was a young, gorgeous, seemingly, seemingly is the operative word, you motherfuckers, and I didn't even have to finish my PhD. <laughs> Highly intelligent, successful, that is the most important thing now on planet Earth, is not? Business! 
woman that, like me, was also raised by a wealthy, abusive, alcoholic father. Home life was so bad for Dara, in fact, that she would run away at 18, taking her younger sister, who's not that bright, I, I might add, and I had a brief interaction with after the publishing of Dolt, whom, of which, she responded to me because Dara didn't have the courage to apologize for her elder sister who was written about in black and white pages. Two ninety nine. trust me, purchase the motherfucker. You fucking imbeciles. <laughs> Love a parade. Anyway, home life was so bad for Dara and her sister that Dara did the operative thing as I'm riffing here and took her sister and fled. Good for Dara and good for her sister. She was no stranger to the sights and sound of abuse, however. Talk about unconsciously seeking out a Stockholm Syndrome doppelganger of her father, all wrapped up inside this dickhead boss who was my father. I love talking to Dara. In fact, I love talking to most of all the employees. Being the owner's son, I had free reign to walk around and peer into everyone's working world, which had its perks. Still chapter 37. You know, Dara was understanding and seemed also to openly share her stories in life with me. Our conversation started at 12 when Dad purchased Blue Ridge. Talk about parentification. You can actually Google that word if you don't know what it means. It is amazing how a 37, at 37, actually now 40, it just hits me. In this moment, how odd it is for a grown-ass motherfucking woman to tolerate someone treating them as my father had treated me, and the majority of his employees like this, co-signing his lascivious behavior. Continuously witnessing how her boss treated his child, me, and with essentially co-signing the behavior through her silence. While oddly lamenting and sharing her own war stories with the child, me again was, yeah, a little uh, experience in the biz. For Dara, this would be what we'd call parentifying yet again. You dumb cunt. As if I had an adult emotional capacity to reason and cope with not only my troubled emotions, but her own. Ah, oh, the glory of having to deal with my, my own and this cunts. That actually didn't write that book. I'm just ad-libbing because as the author of The Good Word, Upside Down Cross, ah, I'm sorry. In my humble, highly educated opinion, with, other, oh, with, oh, with over five years of serving as an MFT intern, regretfully, that's a mother and family therapist if you don't know, you have to have a master's degree in order to participate in that process. And over ten years of my own extensive psychotherapy, if you hadn't noticed, I'm a little bit goofy. <laughs> yeah, goddamn, you know, I think I do know precisely what the fuck I'm talking about. That old boy John go get him tiger, get him tiger, get him. I'm gonna end with this motherfucking dance. Get him tiger, get him tiger. I think that's 37. That's 37 B motherfuckers. Yeah. You know I'd like to thank all my sponsorships, all the people who helped me continuously. Keep sending the money. Keep sending me the energy drinks. Uh, and if nothing else, listen to Guar and smoke a lot of crack cocaine, motherfucker.